Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Characterizing VCOs with the Rodian Schwartz FSWP. In this presentation, we'll show the different ways that voltage-controlled oscillators can be characterized with the FSWP phase noise analyzer. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of voltage-controlled oscillators and how they're characterized. If you're not already familiar with these topics, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding Voltage-Controlled Oscillators before beginning this presentation. Phase noise measurements are another important way that VCOs are characterized, so the presentation Understanding Phase Noise Fundamentals might be helpful if you need a review or a refresher on phase noise. There are many different types of oscillators or synthesizers, that is, devices which are designed to produce a waveform at a given frequency. And there are many different ways of testing or characterizing these sources. As the name implies, the output of a VCO, or voltage-controlled oscillator, is almost entirely a function of two voltages. The control or tuned voltage sets the VCO frequency, but can also affect other characteristics of the output waveform. And, as we'll see, the supply voltage that provides power to the VCO can also affect some VCO characteristics. In this presentation, we'll be concentrating on the effects of these two voltages on the VCO. One of the most important characteristics of any oscillator is its short-term frequency stability, or phase noise performance. So phase noise analyzers, such as the Rodian Schwartz FSWP, are often used for VCO characterization. In order to make these types of measurements, highly precise and highly stable voltage sources are integrated into the instrument. These integrated sources allow voltages to be adjusted and the VCO RF output to be measured simultaneously. And although this presentation focuses on voltage-based measurements, the FSWP also has additional spectrum analysis options for further VCO characterization, such as measuring spurious emissions, settling time, etc. If you're interested in learning more about these other VCO-related measurements, please see the separate presentations for each of these topics. To start VCO measurements on the FSWP, first press the Measure Hard key on the instrument front panel. VCO measurements are divided into two groups, namely VCO characterization and spot noise versus tune. We'll cover both of these groups in this presentation, starting with VCO characterization. Both of these groups of VCO measurements require DC voltage sources that are adjustable or tunable, highly stable, and highly precise. The FSWP has three high-quality DC voltage sources available via BNC connectors on the instrument front panel. These are V-Tune, V-Aux, and V-Supply. Let's look at how these voltage sources are connected. In most cases, the VCO will be powered from the FSWP using the V-Supply connector, and this is typically a fixed voltage source, such as plus 12 volts. The other voltage connection is V-Tune, which usually provides the variable voltage that controls the oscillator frequency. And finally, the oscillator output is always connected to the FSWP's RF-in connector. Here's an example using a typical connectorized VCO. V-Supply is connected to plus 12 volt input and ground. V-Tune is connected to the CON or control connector. And the OUT connector is connected to RF-in on the FSWP. Once these physical connections are made, all further configuration is done through the FSWP's user interface. As mentioned earlier, VCO characterization usually involves two DC voltage sources, one fixed source and one tunable or swept source. All of the DC sources on the FSWP can be configured as either a fixed or as a sweep source. As an aside, there are some types of oscillators, such as YIG oscillators, that are controlled by a current rather than by a voltage, and this is also supported by the FSWP. Voltage sources on the FSWP are configured in two different ways, sweep configuration and DC source configuration. Sweep configuration is where DC power is enabled or disabled globally. Please note that all sources are off when the application is started. We also use this dialog to configure which connector provides the fixed supply voltage and which connector provides the sweep voltage. The behavior of the sweep source is configured under sweep v-tune, where we input the lower and upper limits of the tune or control voltage, the number of measurement points between them, and some additional measurement parameters. For good results, it's important to use enough measurement points. You may want to increase the default value. 
While the sweep is running, the value field shows the current values of the sweep voltage. Note too that a DC voltage status indicator can be found in the bottom right corner of the main GUI. Green means that DC is on, and red means that DC is off. The value of the fixed or supply voltage is defined under DC source config. Here, we've configured the supply voltage to be a constant plus 12 volts. This is also where we could specify current instead of voltage, for example, if we were testing a YIG oscillator. During operation, the DC source configuration dialog can also be used to monitor the amount of current being delivered by each of the sources. Now that we know how to configure voltages, let's move on to measurements, which are accessed using the Display Config soft key. These measurements are frequency, sensitivity, power, current versus voltage, power versus frequency, and harmonic power. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll explain what each of these measurements are and how they're used to characterize VCOs. We'll start with the frequency measurement. This is the most fundamental measurement of a voltage-controlled oscillator and is a plot of the output frequency as a function of the control or tune voltage. In this example, the output frequency is about 409 megahertz when tune voltage is zero and about 711 megahertz when tune voltage is plus 12 volts. In almost all cases, the ideal result is a straight line, that is, a line whose slope is constant over the tuning voltage range. In the results shown here, the line is fairly linear, except at very high, and particularly, at very low tuned voltages. It's important to note, however, that we're making the assumption that the output frequency is solely a function of the tuning voltage. In real VCOs, the output frequency is also somewhat dependent on the supply voltage, this is called frequency pushing. We measure frequency pushing by first setting VTune, the control or tuning voltage, to a fixed value. This fixes the VCO output frequency. In this example, we set VTune to 8 volts. We then sweep the supply voltage, V supply, over a given range and measure output frequency as a function of supply voltage. Keep in mind that VCOs require a certain supply voltage range. Too little supply voltage and the VCO won't output a signal. Too much supply voltage and the VCO may be damaged or destroyed. This range is usually different from the tuning voltage range. Our variable tuning voltage on the previous slide was 0 to 12 volts, but in our pushing measurement, we vary the supply between 8 and 15 volts, the max and min supply voltages supported by this particular VCO. Ideally, the output frequency should not change much due to fluctuation or variation in the supply voltage. Here, the output frequency at the normal 12 volt supply is 622.68 MHz, but drops to 619.98 MHz when supply voltage falls to 8 volts, and rises to 624.03 MHz when supply voltage is plus 15. This variation in output frequency, or pushing, is why a precise, stable VCO supply voltage is important in many applications. On the FSWP, we can easily change from a normal frequency measurement to a pushing measurement without the need to recable. Under sweep config, we first change the values for sweep source and fixed source, making V supply the new sweep source and V tune the new fixed source. Then, under DC source config, we set V tune to a fixed value and configure the sweep range for V supply. Again, Remember that the normal ranges for VTune and VSupply are different on most VCOs. Sensitivity, or tuning sensitivity, answers the question, how much does the output frequency change per tuning volt? In other words, does each additional tuning volt change the output frequency by the same amount? If not, how much variation is there? The units of this measurement, therefore, are megahertz per volt, and ideally, we would want this change to be constant across the entire tuned voltage range. One reason for this is that it's much easier to tune our VCO when we have a linear tuning sensitivity, that is, a linear relationship between tuned voltage and output frequency. If we go back to our plot of frequency versus tuned voltage, we see a slightly nonlinear area at the very low end of the voltage range, and this corresponds to the nonlinear region on our tuning sensitivity graph. The current versus voltage measurement answers the question 
How much supply current does the VCO draw at different tuning voltages? Since output frequency is almost entirely a function of tuning voltage, this plot also approximates current consumption as a function of VCO output frequency. Ideally, the current consumption should be flat across the tuned voltage range. For a given supply voltage, higher current means higher power consumption, so this measurement is particularly useful when characterizing battery-powered VCOs. The power measurement shows VCO output power as a function of the tuned voltage. As you might expect, in the ideal case this graph would also be flat, that is, output power would be constant regardless of the tuned voltage. That said, in most VCOs output power does vary with tuned voltage, such as in the graph shown here. This is an important measurement since the output of a VCO is often connected to a device, such as a mixer, that requires input power to be within a certain range for good performance. We can also plot VCO output power as a function of frequency. Again, ideally this would be flat, but usually isn't. VCO output power is different at different frequencies. However, assuming a flat tuning sensitivity, this graph should be very similar to the power versus tune voltage graph we just looked at. This is because, as we know, there's often a fairly linear relationship between tune voltage and output frequency. Like most other signal sources, VCOs generate power not just at their nominal or fundamental frequency, but also at multiples of that frequency, and these signals are referred to as harmonics. The harmonic power measurement plots the power of the fundamental, the second harmonic, and the third harmonic as a function of the tune voltage. We just saw how output power usually varies with tune voltage or frequency, and this is true for harmonics as well. In almost all cases, harmonics are undesirable, and therefore should be as far below the fundamental as possible, usually tens of dB in most modern VCOs. The other group of VCO measurements are the so-called spot noise versus tune measurements. As you should already know, spot noise is a measure of noise at discrete frequencies, and tune refers to the tuning voltage of the VCO. The FSWP supports two types of spot versus tune measurements. Spot noise versus tune phase noise, and spot noise versus tune AM noise. Let's explain each of these measurements. Spot noise versus tune phase noise is a measure of phase noise at one or more spot offsets as we sweep the tune voltage. For example, this trace shows phase noise at an offset of 1 kHz as we vary the tune voltage from 0 to 12 volts. On the FSWP, spot phase noise can be plotted for up to 6 user-definable offsets. The fact that these traces aren't straight lines means that phase noise varies as a function of tuned voltage. In other words, the single sideband phase noise of our VCO is different at different VCO output frequencies. Phase noise is typically lower at higher offsets, and this can clearly be seen from the plot shown here. The higher offsets in purple and turquoise show lower phase noise than the closer end traces in yellow and blue. Let's look at this another way. If we fix VTune at 6 volts and make a standard phase noise measurement, the results are both the single sideband phase noise graph as well as the spot noise at our user-defined offsets. Next, let's make a spot noise versus tune PN measurement using these same three offsets. If we place markers at 6 volts on all three traces, we should see approximately the same values for spot noise at each of our user-defined offsets. There are a number of different parameters that need to be configured when making any type of phase noise measurement on the FSWP, and these are all found under Noise Config. The most important of these are defining the start and stop offsets of the measurement, and the offsets at which we wish to make spot noise measurements. Be sure that these spot noise offsets fall within the start and stop offset range. And since we're measuring phase noise as a function of the tune voltage, we'll need to define the sweep parameters for V-tune, as we did in previous measurements. Please see the separate presentation on measuring phase noise with the FSWP for more information about phase noise configuration parameters. These same parameters will need to be configured when we make a spot noise versus tune AM measurement, which measures AM, or amplitude noise, as a function of tune voltage at different offsets. The architecture of the FSWP allows it to measure amplitude noise separately from phase noise. In this measurement, we're measuring and plotting amplitude noise at different user-defined offsets from the carrier. Here, at 10 kHz, 
100 kHz, and 1 MHz. Note that AM noise is typically much smaller than phase noise. Let's end with a brief summary of what we've covered. The Rodian Schwartz FSWP Phase Noise Analyzer supports a variety of VCO-related measurements by means of highly precise and highly stable integrated voltage sources. Some of the more important VCO measurements supported by the FSWP include frequency versus tune, tuning sensitivity, output power versus tune, current consumption, harmonic power, and both phase and amplitude noise as a function of tuning voltage. This concludes our presentation, Characterizing VCOs with the FSWP. If you'd like to learn more about characterizing voltage-controlled oscillators or analyzing phase noise, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.